Assalamu alaikum Dear students, my name is Abdul Majid I am your teacher for the subject Principles of Systematic Zoology Welcome to lecture number 9 In lecture number 9, we will talk about Levels and Divisions of Taxonomy Outlines so in today's lecture we will talk about micro taxonomy which has two phases or two parts number one it is alpha taxonomy which is also known as analytical phase and the second is gamma taxonomy which is also known as biological phase and then we will talk about macro taxonomy which has only one phase that is beta taxonomy or synthetic phase lecture outcome so uh, after watching or listening to this lecture students will know about different levels or sub levels or divisions or different phases of taxonomy let's start with micro taxonomy what is micro taxonomy so it's clear from its name it is a mm, when we study taxonomy at micro level, a smaller level, and what is smaller level in taxonomy? The species and the subspecies level is micro level because there is domain is the top level, then there is kingdom, then there is phylum, and so on and so on, and then we come to species and subspecies, which is at the base, it is the foundation of. Uh, classification so they are at micro level so that's why the study of species and subspecies is called micro taxonomy when we study at micro level it's species or subspecies level so actually it is the branch of taxonomy which deals with species and subspecies or you can define it as it is the taxonomy of species level mean when you are studying at species level or below species subspecies level you are studying at micro level taxonomy and when you start studying about genus genus or about genus level so there, there is not micro taxonomy that is macro taxonomy because you are going to upper levels you are going to macro levels so this taxonomy this micro taxonomy has two stages or two phases Number one, that is known as alpha taxonomy or it can also be known as analytical phase. And the other one is gamma taxonomy or it is also known as biological phase. So what is alpha taxonomy? Let's talk about the alpha taxonomy or analytical phase or you can say alpha phase. So it is related to characterization, discrimination in naming of species later on we will take a proper example but let me clear it at this point that if you have unknown you have species but they are unknown you don't know what these species are what takes are or what categories they belong so what you do you study their characters and on the basis of those characteristics you discriminate them from each other and then you name them so this level at which you characterize a species you discriminate it and then you name it so this level is known as alpha phase or analytical phase or alpha taxonomy or you can define it it, it is it is that level at which species are characterized in name or simply as i told you it is that level where you characterize a species and then name it so this level is known as alpha taxonomy it can be regarded as taxonomy mean simply what is taxonomy taxonomy is the characterization and naming of organism or classifying of organism into groups and subgroups so it is actually taxonomy then there is the second phase the gamma phase or the gamma taxonomy so gamma taxonomy it is concerned with the study of 
infra, intra, intra specific variations and other attributes mean when you go inside species before gamma we were talking about the species but when you go inside the species when you dig out the differences the, the different varieties the different variations inside a population inside the species then you are studying at gamma level now you are at gamma level because you passed through species level and then and now you are in uh, uh, subspecies and intraspecific variations so this level is now a bit more complicated one in this phase or this part is now known as gamma taxonomy or you can define it as it refers to intraspecific variation and evolutionary studies and actually this is the study of speciation for example there is a species A and that species is distributed throughout a very large geography and some of the populations they are isolated from each other for example species A has five populations and these five populations are isolated geographically from each other so with the passage of time mutations will occur or variations will occur and which will accumulate in the different populations for example in population number three there is a mutation abrupt mutation and it passes to their offsprings and so on and so on and differentiation occur in them variation occur in them and when you study then these five populations population number one two three four and five and now there are differences inside these populations now all the species keep in mind all the species or all the populations belong to the same species mean population 1 2 3 4 5 they belong to species a but they are geographically isolated from each other so with the passage of time changes will accumulate in them and when you study those changes those variation inside that species and then you differentiate them into different subspecies so this is actually gamma taxonomy we will take a proper example later on and this is actually the study of speciation because that's with the passage of time maybe there are uh, that much of differentiation that the, the population number three or population number four will become a new species so actually species give rise to new species and this is actually the study of speciation here at this point we study speciation now it, it is actually concerned with population systematic it can be regarded as systematics also why we regard it systematic because in systematics we discriminate things we uh, like study the different characteristics we study why certain characteristics are different and why these uh, what, what, what are the reason behind these differences and why the characteristics are similar and what are the reason behind the similarity of these uh, similarities reasons behind these similarities so this is actually systematics now the second thing or the second uh, the portion is macro taxonomy what is macro taxonomy uh, in macro taxonomy uh, we study uh, the upper levels like for example we go up from subspecies and species we go up a little bit more and we go to genus and family and order and class and phylum and kingdom and domain so these are like like uh, these are uh, upper classes these are upper classes so we call them macro classes so it's macro taxonomy so when we are studying at these levels mean about species mean genus or about genus level so this is called macro taxonomy as it's the name indicates it's at macro level like it is that branch of taxonomy which deals with the classification of genus and higher taxa so what we do in macro taxonomy we study genus and higher taxa we classify genus and higher taxa in micro level we study species and subspecies but in macro we study genus and upward it has only one stage that is known as beta taxonomy or beta phase or synthetic phase so what is this 
it refers to the arrangement of species into a natural system of lower and higher categories so again we will take a proper example but before that for example you have a species you don't know them then you characterize and discriminate and then you name it and after naming you have a species so you were working at micro level but now this species you need to put this species in a genus and that genus into a family and that family into order and that order into a class so when you put this species in a genus and then genus into family and family into order and order into class and class into phylum and so on so then this is actually macro taxonomy and it is beta phase it is synthetic phase or it is beta taxonomy so it is the classification of identified species already identified species those species which are already identified and now you are uh, classifying them or you are placing those species into different categories it can be regarded as classification because it's uh, simple you are just putting the identified species into higher taxa or higher categories in actual practice uh, uh, it's very difficult to discriminate these stages like uh, it is very difficult to discriminate uh, beta phase from the gamma and gamma from the alpha phase because these uh, phases or these stages they integrate with each other it is very difficult to discriminate them uh, in most uh, animals uh, like for example taxonomy is at alpha level or beta level but there are very few groups where taxonomy reached gamma level like in birds like in insects like uh, uh, an insect is uh, order lepidoptera or coleoptera and there are many other isoptera and dermoptera diptera so, uh, so their um, uh, taxonomy reached gamma level um, maybe in some fishes also it reached gamma level and maybe in some other groups but not in all groups uh, like uh, taxonomy uh, uh, is not up to that mark it's not reached that level it not touched that level yet but in some groups uh, we have like uh, uh, gamma level like for example in birds and in insects and lepidopterans and maybe in some fishes or maybe in some other uh, animal species but not in all so uh, in maximum groups we have alpha level and beta level and very few and limited groups where uh, like uh, animals are so much adopted and they reached spe subspecies level so th then we have like uh, the, uh, gamma phase otherwise we don't have a gamma level um, let's take an example um, let me clear it uh, properly for example uh, species and then subspecies so when we study it species and subspecies this level is known as micro taxonomy then when we study a domain kingdom phylum class order family genus when we study at these levels from domain to genus these are known as macro taxonomy so taxonomy is actually two divisions major micro taxonomy where we study species and subspecies and micro taxon macro taxonomy where we study domain kingdom phylum class order family and genus now let's uh, take an example for example wolf bedia everybody knows it the scientific name of wolf is canis lupus so let's start for example if you have a wolf canis lupus and you want to put this canis lupus into higher categories so you, where are you studying you are studying at higher categories at higher levels and that is macro taxonomy so for example canis lupus or wolf belongs to domain eukaryota it belongs to kingdom animalia and it is a work of taxonomist you, uh, the, the taxonomist will place these identified species into higher categories 
so a taxonomist place a wolf into domain eukaryota into a kingdom animalia on the basis of characteristics and then he place it into the phylum vertebrata because it's a vertebrate then the taxonomist will place the wolf into a class mammalia because it's mammal and then he will place it into order carnivora because it's a carnivore and then he will place it in a family canary because they have canines and then he will place it in a genus canis again on the basis of the canine teeth so this level this is beta phase when identified canis lupus and identified species you place this identified species into genus and to family and to order and to class and to phylum and to kingdom and to a domain mean you place this lupus this wolf into canis canary carnivora mammalia vertebrata animalia eukaryota so this phase or this taxonomy is called beta phase or beta taxonomy which in term is a macro taxonomy now let's um, go to the micro level so for example you have a genus canis and it, the canis this genus canis has species but you don't know what are those species for example if the you have three species species one unknown species two unknown species three unknown but you you know these species belong to genus canis but you don't know these species what you do the scientist will characterize will study the character of this species then this species and then this species and on the basis of those characteristics he will discriminate these species and after discrimination and characterization he will name it so for example he named the first one lupus and the second one aureus and the third one familiaris so now we have three species a canis lupus the common wolf canis aureus the jackal the canis familiaris the common dog so now this is micro taxonomy but in micro taxonomy this is alpha phase because you are studying at species level you are identifying or you are working at species level you are identifying you are working inside species level you identified these species by discriminating their characteristics now again if not all species have subspecies you know there is monotypic species and this polytypic species so monotypic species are those species which do not have any subspecies and polytypic species are those species which have subspecies so not all species have subspecies some species have subspecies and some species do not have some species so for example if this lupus has subspecies 1 2 3 4 5 but again you don't know them so what will you do you will again characterize them you will study their characteristics and after studying their characters for example you identified the first one is lupus and now these are the subspecies subspecies lupus subspecies albus subspecies arbus subspecies campestris and subspecies chango so now you have five subspecies so when you study at subspecies level so this level is now known as gamma phase or gamma level so now you see i told you that not in every group you have gamma phase those species or those groups where there are subspecies so there is gamma level and if there are no subspecies there are no gamma level there is then only alpha 
and beta levels. So when you are studying at subspecies level, this is gamma phase and this is micro taxonomy. So both of these alpha phase and gamma phase both are micro taxonomy. So now it is it becomes canis lupus lupus, canis lupus albus, canis lupus arabus, canis lupus campestris, canis lupus chenco. I hope you understand now. These are actually the tundra wolf, canis lupus albus, canis lupus arabus, Arabian wolf, then this is step wolf, uh, canis lupus campestris, and this is Mongolian wolf, canis lupus chenko. So these are a few examples. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any question, please uh, ask. Feel free to ask any question. If you have any question, please ask. Thank you. Take care. Allah Hafiz. Thank you.